Alright, end of the trip. Trip review and gear review. I wanted to do a little follow up to uh, the trip and talk about the gear, some of which worked out and how well it worked out, some of which uh, I probably wouldn't use again. Anyway, this is my basic camping kit. Um, of course, when you're on a kayak trip like this, everything has to work because there's no room to carry backup of anything. So I was quite happy with uh, the stove setup I went with, and that's the uh, little MSR Inferno or whatever this is called. This uh, little catalytic converter that fits right on top of there. Boiled water very quickly and saved me a lot of fuel over the long run. I started out with six of these canisters and I ended up with two. So I used four canisters in two and a half weeks, which is pretty good. Um, as far as fuel consumption goes, of course, having extra canisters and the ability to boil water quickly like that is important as a backup filtration system for the water. Uh, filtration system I've been using for years is the MSR pump, and again, it performed beautifully. Uh, I had to clean the, clean the cartridge a couple of times, but other than that, I have no complaints whatsoever. Uh, I did use my bug hat a couple of times when the gnat's really bad and a little bit of DEET went a long way with, uh, with the gnats and the mosquitoes. I never had to use my backup life straw, but nice to have. Doesn't weigh much, doesn't take up much room. My medical kit came in handy several times. I had an incident where I lit my quick dry pants on fire. Luckily I wasn't wearing them at the time and I got some burns on my hands. Uh, they've healed now, I've got some burns on my leg, but uh, other than that, I had minor cuts and scrapes, but nothing I needed to stitch up or glue myself back together, but nice. I didn't have to use that too much. The pocket rocket stove, what are these, 10 or $12 on Amazon, just cheap, and they are extremely effective for simmering down rice my little pot was effective as well. They're very light, so I had two of those. I did have a backup stove for that. Uh, this was my favorite little pot, cup, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think it's titanium. I think this one's Tox, and it's about, oh, I don't know. It's one of the small ones. Made breakfast in that every day. My little knife, uh, survival knife, came in handy. It wasn't too big. As far as survival knives go, it wasn't super high quality, so it didn't hold the edge very well, but I did bring a, uh, a little sharpening system and had to put an edge on it a couple of times. I also had a backup blade. Of course, a spork, foolproof. This little light worked really well. These are these pull-out lights, and I'm happy with that. The water system, very happy with these, uh, this canteen. It worked very well as far as uh, being very light and then fills up to 96 ounces when I need it. A couple of these, of course, they're not gonna go bad. And my flare gun, again, never had to use it, had to oil it when I was out there, the flares, but it was good for a backup in case I got really stranded or I had a problem with a bear, which I did not. So camera gear, so I'm filming with my, uh, my Lumix uh, ZS60. ZS60 and it's my MP4, my uh, 4K video system as well as 4K imaging system, a little point and shoot and it performed very well. Of course it's not waterproof so I only take it out uh, when it's not raining and since it was raining 12 out of the 17 days it's very very difficult to uh, pull it out at a, fl at a moment's notice. But what I shot mostly of this, uh, most of this trip on was this one. It's, uh, it's a Lumix Panasonic. Uh, I think this one is a DMC TS6. And yeah, these are pretty solid cameras. I've used this now for several years and it's worked very well. Uh, I've got my little book of SD cards and that worked out very well. Uh, waterproof and crush proof because of course it's very important to keep the SD cards. I never had to dig into my backup camera, which is a little Olympus Tough. I never never had to touch it. It's a good thing, which means I never dropped this guy in the water. Uh, 
three different cameras, three different charging systems, three different batteries. Uh, so a lot of my camera gear consisted of batteries, charging, charging cables, and my little system of pulling apart the cigarette lighter, hooking it into a sealed lead acid battery it worked very well. I, I ran that charger overnight many, many nights, and I still have a charge in it, and that's 14 milliamp. Of course, it's an eight pound battery, and is a drag carrying that thing around. But everything sealed up in little waterproof Pelican cases or in these boxes and then sealed inside of a dry bag if possible. Or with the exception of the sealed lead acid which can sit in the bottom of the hole and get damp if it wants. Uh, overall camera gear worked really well. I'm really happy so far with the quality of video I have off of things and uh, I hope they, that shows in the final product. Day 17 and this is the food that I have left. I started out with 35 pounds of food and I end with about perhaps two and a half, three pounds of food. I might have been able to stretch it a few more days with some rationing but I did not. Um, I've got some carbohydrates left. I've got one, two packs, three packs of rice and one pack of quinoa. That's probably the bulk of my weight. It's probably about two pounds, pound and a half anyway. Uh, a few ounces of coffee left, two packs. Some of my uh, freeze-dried vegetables or my dried out vegetables that I sealed up. Uh, little protein supplies or steak strips. I didn't get into those. One block of cheese left. Uh, salt, granulated salt. I went through two packs of this, salting down fish and cooking with it and granulated sea salt, fantastic. Just one pack of pecans and half a pack of mixed nuts. I went through pounds and pounds of nuts. One pack of tortillas that I never got into. Still pretty weighty. Can't believe I carried that all the way and didn't eat it. Uh, yeah, there's some remnants of one. A head of garlic. I probably brought too much garlic. And I probably brought too much oil as well. Uh, have enough oil left over to last at least another two or three weeks. Um, but overall, that's that's the food I had left with after starting with 35 pounds and a, and a pile of food that would probably fill this whole bed. And I probably lost about 10 pounds on the trip, not from dieting or watching my calories, but just you can't keep up with the calorie burn when you're out paddling 10, 12 hours a day. It's just, there's no time to stop and eat. And I'm not a bar guy. I just don't like the sugar spike I get from any bars. Um, you need to you need to eat real food and chew real food I've found to stay healthy so but overall I'm really help, happy with the food situation I would rather have a little left over than not enough and have to ration it because I burned a lot of energy and you know if I needed food it was there so camera gear so I'm filming with my uh, my Lumix uh, ZS60 ZS60 Six zero, and it's my MP4, my uh, 4K video system, as well as 4K imaging system, a little point and shoot, and it performed very well. Of course, it's not waterproof, so I only take it out uh, when it's not raining. And since it was raining 12 out of the 17 days, it's very, very difficult to uh, pull it out at a at a moment's notice. But what I shot mostly of this, uh, most of this trip on was this one. This. Uh, it's a Lumix Panasonic. Uh, I think this one is a DMC TS6. And yeah, these are pretty solid cameras. I've used this now for several years and it's worked very well. Uh, I've got my little book of SD cards and that worked out very well. Uh, waterproof and crush proof because of course it's very important to keep the SD cards. I never had to dig into my backup camera which is a little Olympus Tough. I never, never had to touch it, it's a good thing, which means I never dropped this guy in the water. I uh, had three different cameras, three different charging systems, three different batteries, uh, so a lot of my camera gear consisted of batteries, charging, charging cables, and my little system of pulling apart the cigarette lighter, hooking it into a sealed lead acid battery it worked very well. I, I ran that charger overnight many, many nights, and I still have a charge in it, and that's 14 milliamp. Of course, it's an eight pound battery, 
and is a drag carrying that thing around. But everything sealed up in little waterproof pelican cases or in these boxes and then sealed inside of a dry bag if possible. Well, with the exception of the sealed lead acid which can sit in the bottom of the hole and get damp if it wants. Uh, Overall, camera gear worked really well. I'm really happy so far with the quality of video I have off of things, and uh, I hope they, that shows in the final product. Day 17, and this is the food that I have left. I started out with 35 pounds of food, and I end with about perhaps two and a half, three pounds of food. I might have been able to stretch it a few more days with some rationing, but I did not. Um, I've got some carbohydrates left. I've got one, two packs, three packs of rice and one pack of quinoa. That's probably the bulk of my weight. It's probably about two pounds, pound and a half anyway. Uh, a few ounces of coffee left, two packs. Some of my uh, freeze-dried vegetables or my dried out vegetables that I sealed up. Uh, little protein supplies or steak strips. I didn't get into those. One block of cheese left. Uh, salt, granulated salt. I went through two packs of this, salting down fish and cooking with it, and granulated sea salt, fantastic. Just one pack of pecans and half a pack of mixed nuts. I went through pounds and pounds of nuts. One pack of tortillas that I never got into. Still pretty weighty. Can't believe I carried that all the way and didn't eat it. Uh, yeah, there's some remnants of one. A head of garlic. I probably brought too much garlic and I probably brought too much oil as well. Uh, have enough oil left over to last at least another two or three weeks. Um, but overall that's that's the food I had left with after starting with 35 pounds and a, and a pile of food that would probably fill this whole bed. And I probably lost about 10 pounds on the trip, not from dieting or watching my calories, but just you can't keep up with the calorie burn when you're out paddling 10, 12 hours a day. It's just, there's no time to stop and eat. And I'm not a bar guy. I just don't like the sugar spike I get from any bars. Um, you need to you need to eat real food and chew real food, I've found, to stay healthy, so. But overall, I'm really help, happy with the food situation. I would rather have a little left over than not enough and have to ration it because I burned a lot of energy and you know if I needed food, it was there. Clothing, all important clothing. I knew it was going to be wet on this trip and I knew the temperatures were gonna be roughly 65 down to about 45 degrees. So had to bring some extra thermal layers um, outside of my dry suit. But most of the time my temperatures were down in the low 50s um, on average for a daytime temperature uh, with cool nights down into the low 40s. So the first thing I brought is a quick dry camp towel and that was very important for drying my, my feet off, my body after a long day and uh, it was invaluable. It got pretty stinky, uh, washed out fine at the end but these synthetic quick dry towels are pretty important. Uh, hat selection is pretty important. I went with this bucket hat. I think uh, it was a good choice. It covers my ears, keeps my head warm and fairly dry and I wasn't wasn't unhappy all with it. It was quilted. It's a good winter hat, so wasn't disappointed. I brought a little ski hat. This is made by my friend Peter Muller, and uh, I'll show you another piece of his clothing. But he uses really nice quality fabric. Sews it himself. Had these for years. They weigh absolutely nothing, and they are extremely warm. So a uh, little sun hat, which I got the chance to use, I think exactly once. Wasn't much sun. And I was using the Kokotat, uh, what do they call this, the uh, silk underwear, or the wool core they call it. So it's got merino wool in it. And if I go back to get more clothing on another expedition, it will have to be something with merino wool because I wore this day after day and it didn't get appreciably very stinky. As opposed to something like this, which comes from a big box store, um, labeled as, you know, semi-synthetic or synthetic um, thermals. And they cost 50, 60 bucks and they are junk. They get damp, they get wet, they get just unusual, unbearably stinky. 
and uh, I couldn't wash it out in the field. Plus, uh, when I was drying it, it got near, actually, I was wearing it, and I, I got hit by some uh, sparks, and I burned a big hole in it and burned it into my leg. So, it's, uh, I probably will never buy these again. Um, this synthetic shirt, uh, I think these are pretty common, this material. I don't know who, what brand it is, but uh, real lightweight, doesn't offer much insulation. And uh, that was good as an over, another layer in there. This was the uh, thermal top that I brought, and it, again, it's pretty light. It's made by my friend Peter. He sells mostly at uh, farmer's markets and stuff. He's not a big producer, but he, he knows his stuff. He knows how to stitch clothes together. I've had this for years, and it's still just the same product it was when I bought it from him. Uh, not cheap, but he puts hand labor into it. Uh, nice little cuffs. Just sit there, and uh, I ski in this. I kayak in it, and that was my main thermal. The jacket I bought from the big box warehouse, this is... Uh, or kind of a mid-range, lightweight rain jacket, and it performed very well. I liked it. It packed down and had a hood. It would, in a light drizzly rain, it, it kept me just fine. So, and a couple pairs of socks. The socks were a Thermax material, again from the big box store, and some wool. Uh, wasn't that impressed with the Thermax. It left my feet very wet most of the time. Um, obviously, these are just kind of under socks. I should have layered it up with something heavier, but I didn't. Um, I would probably go back to a, a more of a wool, natural products and less synthetic like this Thermax stuff next time because I had feet problems from too much water. But overall, that was my, my clothes except for the t-shirt shorts that I'm wearing right now. And overall, I was fairly happy with the, with the uh, selection I made. Um, I'd probably change a few more things. Definitely would look for merino wool um, in my products because anything else that just says uh, almost as good as wool is not as good as wool. So sleeping, sleeping wise, I went with a two inch thick, 72 inch by 20 inch wide inflatable pad again from the big box store. Uh, I love the modification with the little buttons on it, keeps you from sliding off. Uh, there's times I would have liked the 25 inch wide one, but that was a little more than I needed to carry. Definitely the full length made a big difference, sleeping on the ground every night. The bag that I went with this time was a, a lighter one. Um, I have a lot of bags, uh, big name bags, and I, but I went with this company. Um, they're not sponsoring me or anything but shout out to them, they make a good product, Outdoor Vital, and they do a direct to consumer, so their prices are really low. I think I picked up this bag for about 130 bucks, and it performed very well, I'm very happy with it. The stitching and everything. The zipper is a little cheap compared to a, a really nice, you know, big dollar bag that's, but those big dollar bags can cost two and a half, three times as much, because I have several of them. But this one was good. It was two and a half pounds. It packed down very light, very small. And it came with a, uh, a cinch sack, um, but I replaced that with a Sea to Summit bag cinch sack, which really wasn't that much heavier than the one that came with it. So realistically, the one that came with it probably would have done the trick. But overall, yeah, I was really happy with this. It was just enough. It was a uh, 15 degree centigrade bag and temperatures got down into the low 40s. I was with a couple of thermal layers, I was still good with that. And it crushed down tight enough to fit into uh, both of these, into a stuff sack that I could put on the back of the boat. So my tent, I'm sure if you watch the series, you've seen my tent many times. But I went with a uh, Mountain Hardware, Light Wedge 2, I've had it for years. I had it in the 2013 trip. Again, it performed excellent. Um, still have all the original poles, everything's held up great. Windstorms and everything. With the exception, the fly is getting a little worn. It's not uh, as waterproof as it was, and I need to go in and do some seam sealing or something. Or just see if I can order a whole new fly, because uh, it's starting to weep through. 
But overall, the tent performance was very acceptable. It's a two-person tent, um, at least two-person, which gives me plenty of room, but you spend a lot of time in the tent when it's raining most of the time. Uh, the ground cloth that I used, um, which became invaluable, is just one of these cheaper red on one side, silver on the other. Uh, they sell these everywhere. I think Coleman makes them or something like that. It's saturated, it's soaked, it's coming apart. I'm not even gonna to try to save it. They cost like 15, 16 bucks, and that's going right in the garbage can. Goodbye. So the, uh, this is the clothing I wore on a daily basis to protect myself while I was kayaking. Of course, a dry suit, and Coca Tat's one of my sponsors. I've been working with them for many years, and they produce a very fine dry suit very appreciative of it. I used the Radius dry suit this time. Uh, mostly, I really like the hood system that I could cover up through, through the storms and that became very handy. Uh, the zip switch, I, a couple of times I used only the pants so that was very helpful. Um, I never had a situation where I could wear only the top. Um, just was, it just was too cold to go in shorts to paddle all over, but overall a really decent setup. Um, the cut is a little funny for me as far as the uh, feet go. They start to bunch up in my boots, but that's the only complaint I have, possibly just me. But the zip switch is a little difficult for the zipper to, to lock in, but it found as soon as it started getting difficult, I would uh, pull out my little tube of, of lubricant and I'd lube up that area pretty good and it would start to work well. But every suit's a compromise. You have to take some things good and some things bad. Overall, that was a very good dry suit choice. I used um, my older Bahia Kokotat one. They were gonna get me a new one, but it didn't work out, um, which is all right. And the older one fits really well. When they get old, they tend to, uh, to break into the curve of your body more. And uh, it was nice not to have to break in a new one along the way. This one's been beat up and I had it in 2013 and it still works great. So it doesn't look pretty anymore, but it's functional. And this Snapdragon spray skirt is getting pretty old too. It's the Expedition model. That's starting to leak through the Gore-Tex has kind of had it. So I probably need to replace that at some point, but these Expedition ones with the extra heavy duty uh, fabric along the side they hold up forever and of course my extra tough boots are a little shorter now due to a little fire Problem and I realized I had to cut about four inches off of them um, But they actually work better a little bit shorter. They uh, don't inhead, impede my uh, ability to get in and out of them as much so which is pretty critical, but absolutely critical to have a good sole. I have a arthritic ankle and having a good solid sole to walk around on the rocks in Alaska with are absolutely critical. There's no, no wonder why these are some of the most popular boots in Alaska. So overall, that was my kayak clothing and kayak setup I wore every day. And I was very happy with the choices there. So for waterproofing all this stuff, um, I went with four, four, I had five bags to start with, with, but one of them broke and I left it behind in Ketchikan at the beginning of the trip. Um, but my four basic dry bags, my primary dry bag, which I kept my sleeping bag and my pad in, was the Cedar Summit 35 liter hydraulic um, with the tie down straps. So it made for a nice backpack if I was using it to, uh, for instance, when I portaged up rivers and stuff, I would use this as a back strap and I could take my supplies with it. So very, you know, that's my most expensive one. Definitely it wasn't cheap, 35 liters. It held both my pad and my sleeping bag and a strap to the back of the boat. But uh, it stayed dry and it did not leak. Um, nothing broke and 100% solid performance. So worth the money on that. These lighter sea line bags, I trust them for the inside of the hull. I think over time they start to leak. Um, but they are much cheaper, much more reasonably priced, I suppose. Um, but again, if you need to carry stuff inside the boat to stay somewhat dry, those are, are a pretty decent choice. And I had a 10 liter, a 20 liter, 
and then I had an older uh, Hydro Venture Seattle Sports one that I would use. Primarily what I'd use this for is transporting gear. So I wouldn't really leave anything in there, but if I needed to take all small things out of the boat, I'd throw them in there and then I could carry them all at once in a larger tote. Then the, uh, the little Pelican boxes that I use, crush proof, waterproof, I use two of those, one of them to protect my fishing reels and stuff, and the other one just as my immediate box that I'd carry my GPS in, my cell phone charger, um, extra batteries, extra knife, passport, that sort of thing that I would carry with me all the time. These worked very well, this one's getting old and the O-ring's starting to go on it, so it's starting to leak a little bit, but overall, Love these things. They uh, are great for carrying in the cockpit with you. So overall that's it. Um, other than my fishing gear, which worked out very well, I think I lost one lure or two lures the whole time. And my gear I was pretty happy with overall in the overall choices. Of course nothing can, abs <laughs> nothing can fail. You know, um, I bring three stoves and that's probably the most important thing is to have a stove to be able to cook your food because you can't live off of uncooked rice if uh, your stoves go down. It's going to be very, very difficult to uh, survive like that. So I had plenty of fuel. I had good stoves. I had good warmth. I had good sleeping products. And uh, I survived. I had enough food, not a huge amount of extra food and not a wide variety but I had enough. So overall, that's my gear review. And thanks very much for watching.